Lots of charge and charge. Josh BH Games here, and welcome to week four of the WSS. I am your coach of the Chester Chin Charles, and we are about to take on Poise and his Miami Heat Wars. And this is the team we're going to use to take it on. But before we go through that, let's take a look at Poise's team. So, Poise's draft is very, very interesting. We start off with Mega Agron. Mega Agron is a tank. It is a literal tank. It can take any physical hits it can come across. And especially with its uh, filter ability, it can do some serious uh, tanking as well. But it does actually have some really good attack stats too. It has uh, things like Earthquake and Stone Edge. And if you catch an Iron Head from that, a Fairy type is definitely going down. So, yeah, it's a very scary mon. And Mega Agron is kind of a very scary mon and we don't really have a lot to cover it really but hopefully i've got something with this team we'll have to wait and see top of coco top of coco is a very very interesting one it can learn a lot of great moves i didn't realize it could learn calm mind but yeah it can learn calm mind uh so yeah that's a thing it's a very scary mon to deal with as well and i don't really know what to do about it myself but i have a few ideas and electric terrain is a thing that uh uh, Topococo has and of course nothing can fall asleep whilst in electric terrain so that means I can't pull off any rest strategies or anything like that though rest is not really a effective way for recovery this week but I've got other ways then we have Mamo Swine. Mamo Swine is a very scary mon indeed it also is a very big tank it can get some good speed it has some good priority moves as well with things like Icicle Crash and Ice Shard it can do some very good damage with Earthquake. It has some decent attack stats, actually, to tell you the truth. It's not a bad mon, is Mamo Swine. And it's, it's a very good mon for a League format. So it's a very scary mon to deal with. Then we have Dragonite. Dragonite is interesting. Dragonite learns a lot of moves. Even moves that are super effective against it, like Ice Beam. It also learns a lot of really interesting moves dragonite is just so powerful and for a, a dragon type it's actually rather tanky unlike most dragon types are because of well it's defense it's the stats make it tanky and the fact that well basically he has a uh, multi-scale which means in other words super effective moves should do do slightly less damage which is annoying uh so dragonite is a very scary one indeed for that but like it works really nicely so dragonite very scared of this thing then we have his special tank, Jellicent. Jellicent is a tank, but it is a special tank. It can't hit, take any the big hits uh, on the physical side, but on the special side, it can take a lot of things. It can. I've known that Jellicent can take thunderbolts, so it's not a good, it's not a good idea or energy balls, but it, can, it they can take them. Seed bombs, seed flares, they can take these things because they are tanks. They are literal tanks. And it's not going to do that much of its attacking of its own. It's probably just going to be there to war things, but it's there, and it can do some interesting special attacks too. It's got some. It's got some special, not a lot, but it's there. Then we have a Moongus. A Moongus is here to put things to sleep. It is literally the hacks type. It can spore. It can poison. It can. Uh, it can paralyze it can do anything it wants really but it's a very scary mon for that reason and it has a few uh, abilities that make it work really nicely in that situation i mean you don't really expect people to run effect spore but it's there i've seen uh, it can happen i've seen people run effect spore on their munguses uh, and a mungus is uh, kind of uh, it's also vgc compatible so it's a very scary mon indeed for that reason too so a mungus is quite fun and i would have loved to have run it myself this year but i'm not running it but amoongus is pretty cool i like amoongus then we have embor embor is a very interesting mon it's not as scary as some of his other mons but it works out rather nicely and it can do some serious damage it is a physical fighting type and it does have uh it is also kind of bulky as well i've seen a bulky set for uh for embor and that's a it's a bulky it's a very bulky set i've seen for Ambor, and i'm not sure if he'd run it because poise is a very creative thinker when it comes to uh, building strategies for battles so i don't think he'd won you know the great big pig uh, set from uh smog and so i don't really feel like he'd run that 
Then we have a Stunk Tank. Stunk Tank is pretty much here for Defog, really. It's got some good special attack too, but it, and a little bit of defense, a little bit of physical too, but like the fact is mostly it's here to be a person to get the fog off and get away with the fog. So that's basically what it's here for. It does have some good attacks too. Though. Then we have Heracross. Heracross is a big physical fighting type, but the fact is it's a little weak to rocks. These little rocks will hurt Heracross. These little rocks will do a lot of damage to Heracross. Even if we set up stealth rocks, these rocks go, you know, rocks are a thing that Heracross cannot handle. Heracross is a very is a very scary mod with things like close combat and stuff, and mega horn and stuff like that. But the fact is, you bring a rock uh, against the Heracross, the Heracross is going down. The Heracross is dying to the rocks. It can't handle your rocks. So it's a very scary mod, but rocks. They'll end up neuro, neuro nullifying your very scary mon. Then we have Sand Slash. Sand Slash is a points pick and it's a pretty good one at that. It does some serious work too. It's uh, good for rapid spin, good for setting up rocks. It's something I would have needed for my team because, I mean, I don't really have the ability to set up rocks at this moment in time. But I do have 150 points. So, you know, oh wait, no, no, no. I only have 100 points. I have 100 points I lost last week. So, two more wins, and I possibly could pick up a points pick. Uh, and that means possible I could finally get a, a rock setter and a, a rock spinner away. Hopes for a clay doll. Hopes for a clay doll. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see on that. Or possibly in a, in a mold doll, maybe? I don't know. We'll have to see. I'm debating them for, uh, for a while, but like the fact is, I need to get the wins first before I need to worry about sort of things like transactions and stuff like that. But I would be open to like trading my uh, some of my members of my team away. I just need to like talk with some other coaches and find out about uh, trades and stuff like that. Anyway, not important right now. Sand Slash is pretty good. It does have some decent attack too, and some K defense. It's not built for defense, but it's there, and it's mostly built for speed really, and uh, getting away with uh, getting a rapid spin off at the right time. And getting rocks up at the right time. So if it does come to battle, I don't really see it myself coming to battle, but it is there and it can do the work. It's a good it's a good spinner. Then we have Town Flame. Town Flame In the days of Sip Gen, Town Flame was amazing. In the days of Sip Gen, nothing was stopping a Town Flame because Gale Wings was OP. These days, Gale Wings is not OP anymore. Gale Wings is just an ability. And that makes Talonflame just a Pokemon. Not OP anymore, just a Pokemon. Because the fact is, if you're a Talonflame, you're running Flare Blitz. You're running, uh, Blade, you're running Brave Bird. You're running these moves that are going to hurt Talonflame. Which means, in other words, with Gale Wings, he's probably only going to get off one Brave Bird if it comes to the battle at all. So it's not really going to help him in any way, shape, or form because it's the only ability you run on the Talonflame if you're running competitive. I don't even know what Talonflame... What is Talonflame's other ability? And what else could he run? I need to find that out right now. What is Talonflame's other ability? Talonflame. Here we go. Flame Body. Yeah, you're not running Flame Body. You're not running Flame Body on a Talonflame. I mean, you could. I'm not suggesting it's a good idea, but you could run it. I mean, you know, 30% chance of burn is pretty cool, but, like, compared to Gale Wings, you're running Gale Wings. That's basically your end of story. That's what you're doing. You're running Gale Wings. And a lot of people would want to run Gale Wings. So, yeah, I would go with Gale Wings over Flame Body at any time. I just didn't realize it had Flame Body. So, yeah. Uh, Talon Flame, very scary mon. Not sure what Poise is going to do with it if it's coming to the battle at all. I'm not going to make assumptions on what people bring to the battles anymore because the fact is, I've been wrong about this for the past couple of weeks. I've seen mons that I think that's not coming to the battle, and then it comes to the battle, and I think to myself, well, I'm an idiot, and I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to think about that. I don't want to make myself think that I'm an idiot. Anyway, so Poise has not had a win yet. He is uh, 0 3. And uh, minus six deferential, so hopefully I get my uh, hopefully I get a win off against him, and 
he falls to 0-4, and I get my redemption for uh, last week's loss. Because that's the plan going into this week, is to get redemption for last week's loss. Anyway, let's take a look at my team. So, my team has Neo King, Breloo, Magmorta, Togekiss, Bayonet, and Ladias. And I would like to thank Josh Hooha for giving me this team, or helping me out with this team. We got in a call about Tuesday. Uh, this is Thursday when I'm recording it. But like the fact is, we got in a call on Tuesday night, and we were worked through this team we worked through the fundamentals of this team and i've never done that before with uh with my assistant coach derude so it was pretty interesting to work through it like that and i learned a lot from the from that little call there so i'm pretty happy with this team and i can't wait to uh use it now so thank you josh for that thank you very much there's a dog barking there's a dog barking that's annoying stop that barking dog yeah, we're not we're not even allowed pets in this apartment block, but like my neighbours have pets. Anyway, not important. It's like nine AM when I'm recording this right now, so it's quite early. Anyway, hey, not important. Let's take a look at this team. So we start off with Charles. I'm gonna go further in because I can hardly see this. So we start off with Charles. Charles is my Nido King, holding a life orb this week with Sheer Force, with Stealth Rocks, uh, Earth Power, Sludge Wave, and Ice Beam. With investments, we are talking 252 in Special Attack, 216 in Speed, and 40 in... What are you in? You are in HP, and we're rocking a Timid Nature to outspeed a lot of things. So basically, this is here to hopefully outspeed Dragonite. It's also hopefully here to outspeed Mamoswine. I mean, if necessary, we should be able to outspeed a lot of his good mons because they're very scary mons, and I have ways of dealing with these people. But my idea is to outspeed them so I can actually do deal with these people. Like for example, I want to hit an Earth Power uh, on. Uh, on some of his mons. I want to hit a nerf power on that top of Koku, but I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get that opportunity to do it, so we'll have to wait and see on that. But Mamo Swine, I might just be able to do it. I might be able to hit an Ice Beam on that Dragonite, and it'll, that Dragonite will not appreciate that. About Moongus will not appreciate an Ice Beam. There's a lot of mons on his team that will not appreciate these moves that I'm bringing to the battle. Oh, and that's going to make it very, very interesting. For example, another one, Embor is not going to like that Earth Power. Embor is not going to like that Earth Power. And if I can get up those rocks, well, that Heracross is not going to like that. That Talonflame is not going to like that. That Embor is not going to like that. So if I can get up those rocks, these things are very, very scary, and they will not like the, ra the rocks. So, Charles, you are here to help me with this battle, and I will always love you for that. Then we have Clubber Lang. Clubber Lang is my Breloom with a choice scarf, technician for the ability, with the moves Force Palm, Bullet Seed, Rock Tomb, and Muff Punch. With, we're talking investments. He's got 252 in speed, 252 in attack, and 4 in special defense as well. Rocking a jolly nature, again, for speed. So basically, Breloom is here to do some serious damage. Uh, we've got Force Palm, which does power 60, which gets up to power 90 with a chance of paralysis with Technician boosted, so that's amazing. We also have Rock Tomb, which power, I think it's like power 60 as well, and that means we'll get put up to power 90, and of course, check, lower speed, so that's amazing. we got Moth Punch, which has priority, and the fact is also Technician boosted, so it does some damage as well. Bullet Seed is here, it does a lot, it's a multi hitting move, can hit two to five times and do some serious damage. And it's a Technician boosted, and I should have clicked it last week, but I didn't click it last week. I clicked Force Palm instead, I went power over majority of hits, and I really should have gone majority of hits over power. I'm still learning, guys, I'm still learning. I will make mistakes like that on my way to the top, but I will continue to keep at this, and eventually I will learn. So, Breloom, I'm sorry that I didn't click Bullet Seed uh, last week, but I will. you will forgive me, because I might click Bullet Seed. There might be a time where I'm thinking Bullet Seed, Force Palm, Bullet Seed, Force Palm, and I click Bullet Seed, and I actually do some serious damage with Bullet Seed. We'll have to wait and see on that. So, Breloom, I love you, and you will work for me this week. 
Then joining the team for this week, we have War Machine. Now, War Machine, we debated over for a while, me and Josh. I mean, there was interesting sets that War Machine gets. And there's a few interesting ideas that I just thought... There are a few interesting ideas that I have thought of for uh, War Machines. And I really want to use them. Like a physical set with Z Belly Drum. Not going to go too much into that, because that I don't want to give people other idea ideas that what I'm running. But like that's an idea. That is a very very interesting idea. I could run Z Belly Drum. I could give you an normalism Z. I could get that attack up and get my, all my health back as well. That'd be awesome. But anyway, War Machine this week is holding a life orb with Flame Body for that 30% chance of uh, flame, 30% uh, chance of burn. If people try to hit me, hopefully people will try and hit me. For that reason, on the physical side that is, with uh, Flamethrower, Psychic, uh, Thunderbolt, and Earthquake. As we're talking investments here, we're talking 252 in Special Attack, 232 in Speed, and 24 in Attack. We're rocking a hasty nature again to outspeed a lot of things on his team. And it will do some serious damage. I cannot wait to see what this thing is going to do. I love War Machine. I love... Uh, what I've got here with uh, War Machine, the uh, Magmortar, and I feel like this could work out really nicely. So, War Machine, we're going to do some work here today, and it's going to be awesome. We outspeed a lot of it. We should be able to outspeed a lot of his mons. We should be able to outpower a lot of his mons with our investments. So, I feel like this could work out really nicely. And Magmortar is pretty good. You mean you don't really want to leave him in a water type, but with the power it gets from the Thunderbolt, and especially if we're especially attack invested. We can do some serious damage with it too. So, leaving us in on a Thunderbolt, it's not always the bad idea. It's not always the, it's definitely not the good idea, but it's not always the bad idea. Then we have our tanks, and we start off with Colin. Colin is our Toga Kiss with uh, leftovers and Serene Grace uh, for the ability to fog uh, to get off uh, to get rid of entry hazards on our side of the field if he decides to bring entry hazards. We got Roost for recovery, we got Thunder Wave to paralyze anything that comes in, and if we need to deal with it, we can. By that reason, there's, no, there's a police car going past. Oh my god, this is the worst time in the world to record. Police cars and dogs that aren't even supposed to exist in the world of my apartment. Yeah, that's annoying. Please stop that. I want to record, but Ellesmere Fort says no. Anyway... <laughs> A, uh, yeah, Thunder Wave to do some serious damage. It's not to do damage, but it's here to, you know, basically kill his team off because, like, he's not going to want to get hit by a Thunder Wave. I was proved that in previous weeks. People do not want to get hit by Thunder Waves because that really does kill momentum. And I like that. I like killing momentum. And then Air Slash is here, and Air Slash does a lot of damage. Plus, the fact is, flinch is a thing. I can flinch things. With Serene Grace, my chances of flinching are more. So that's awesome, and I can flinch people, and that'd be cool. Flinching is cool. Anyway, so, as we're talking investments here, we have 248 in HP, 252 in defense, and 8 in special attack as well. To do a little bit of damage with those air slashes, we're rocking a bold nature to be a tank, basically. Uh, up our defense, minus our attack, which is not there in the first place, so I don't why do I care about our attack. Uh, so, yeah, I'm really liking this set. Then we have Coco, our Mega Bayonet. Bayonet. And, of course, we're rocking the Bayonet tonight because we're Mega Bayonet. You know, I have to come in as a Bayonet and then Mega Evolve to Mega Bayonet, but, like, that's fine. Uh, this week we have Insomnia for the ability because abilities don't matter when you're a Mega because, like, you're going to get Prankster. That's basically what it is. You'll have Prankster as soon as I Mega Evolve you, you'll have Prankster. So ability does not matter. Then we have Shadow Sneak, uh, Will O Wisp, Disable, and Pain Split. Pain Split is here for recovery. Disable is. Um, I'll get into Disable in a minute. It's really cool. I the, the strategies me and Josh worked out for Disable is really cool. Anyway, uh, we have Will O Wisp to burn people. I haven't been burning people a lot with Will O Wisp, but I need to start doing that. It really would nullify some of his physical attackers if they got burnt. So, yeah. I feel like I need to burn some things this week. It would be cool to burn some things like Mammo Swine. It would be cool to burn that. It would be cool to burn... Um, I can't burn Talonflame. I can't burn any Embor. But burning...
burning stuff like a top of cocoa would be pretty cool too. There's there's definitely ideas I can burn stuff, and with my investments, I possibly could get away with leaving you in against things like a top of cocoa. Anyway, and we have Shadow Sneak, which has priority. Disable is here to if we run into trouble. We could, t technically speaking, take a Thunderbolt from a top of cocoa and still live with our investments. And then we could disable it, and that basically nullifies that uh, Pokemon for a few turns, and I'm, and we're okay with it. So, yeah. The uh, Tapu Koku is not actually as scary as you think when it's been nullified by uh, Disable. So, yeah, that's the plan for Tapu Koku this week. Just Disable it. As we're talking investments here, 252 in Special Defense, 4 in Speed, 4 in Attack, and 248 in HP. Uh, rocking a careful nature again to boost that Special Defense. So, really happy with this moveset as well. Uh, we don't really need to worry about our special attack this week, so don't really need to. That's why we're rocking a careful nature. Um, the reason why I'm rocking four in special attack and four in speed as well is because basically, well, I had some extra points left over when I was building this strategy, and I thought to myself, I really should have these points in something, so I put them in something. Hopefully, they might not make a lot of difference, but they might make a lot of difference. We'll have to wait and see on that. We'll have to wait and see what those extra investments do. I had those leftover points, and I really don't like the idea of left, leaving you leftover points. But I know that like sometimes you don't need the extra points, but you might. You know, you know, might. I mean, I can. They can make all the difference. You never know. Just small things make a difference. Anyway, so Coco, I really want you to work for me this week. Hopefully, you will. But Coco is not the only special tank I have. I also have this. We have Solver Ladias with Leftovers, Levitate for the ability. We have Substitute Calm Mind, Psy Shock, and Dragon Pulse. With investments, we are talking 248 in HP, 144 in Special Defense, 116 in Speed, Rocking a Calm Nature, lowering our attack, which doesn't matter, but upping our special defense, which does. So with this moveset, we possibly could be taking Moon Blasts. We possibly could be taking Ice Beams. We probably definitely would be taking Ice Beams, actually. Uh, and Ice Shards and stuff like that. We're probably going to be doing some serious... We're probably going to be taking a lot of moves with this set. But we can also get off a Substitute, get off a few Calm Minds, and we're definitely taking some moves. And if we can get off a few Calm Minds, one Calm Mind probably won't help us. But two Calm Minds probably could. And three Calm Minds will definitely will help us. And that will allow us to sweep. And that's what... Um, uh, basically we could be here to do because this thing could sweep and that's basically what it's here to do and I want that to happen so L Ladias you're going to be my sweeper this week and it's going to hopefully work out the best for you guys so we'll honestly have to wait and see what happens we can go to town with Dragon Pulse and of course Psy Shock as well uh, which will nullify some of his walls maybe with those moves so especially if a calm mind and sub up a bit so yeah can't wait for this and finally, let's take a look at the tables going in to week three. Because I always like to do that. I always like to have a look at tables before going uh, before going into stuff. So, table for this... I've gone too far. I've gone too far. Back to 150, Joe. Yeah. Zoom is something that I'm still working on with Chrome. Anyway, so, looking at tables this week, we start off with the Cape Arvox, and of course that's Josh in the lead with three wins, a differential of 12. Then we have the Gyaradoses, three wins, and a differential of nine. Wait, hang on. Why are the Gyaradoses in the lead, then? Because the, Ag the Adelaide Agrons have three wins and a differential of 12. I don't know. Anyway, this probably is not an update. The the Agrons should be... The Adelaide Agrons, that is, should be in second place. Then we'd have the Gyaradoses in third. Then we have the Squad Blue Jays. Two wins plus a loss. Eight point... Uh, well, differential of eight. Then we are in fifth. Possibly sixth. But, like, yeah. We have two wins and a loss. We're my, uh, with a six differential. And that's pretty cool. But I'd like to get that back, back up there in the... Uh, 
in the um, areas. But as long as we keep ourselves in that top eight, we go. We're going to playoffs, and that's pretty even cool. But you know, it's a long way to go in this tournament as of yet. So you know, we got some time left. But playoffs are a definite thing. I need to start thinking about sometime soon. But then we have the Austin Agrons. A win plus two losses and a plus four differential so pretty cool for them they're getting by themselves back on their feet after their terrible week one performance and they're getting better they are getting better and then we have the pool pit loves uh, seventh place with uh, two wins and a loss and a plus three differential so cc is getting back up there too after his mistakes on week two then we have the Rotterdam Star Raptors. Two wins, two losses. He already played his week four match, which we will not go into in this video. And a plus one differential. Then we have the Nijmegen Nuzleaves uh, with a, two wins and a, and a loss and a plus one differential. So our opponents from last week... Still in ninth place, still doing the do, they're still doing what they do, and hopefully they'll be able to get themselves up there into the playoffs themselves. Because that was a pretty good battle last week, and I like that. Thank you uh, for giving me that good battle there. Also, that was pretty cool. Anyway, so then we have the Long Island Palpitoads, a win plus two losses and a plus four differential. And then we have the uh, Dublin Sea Umbreons, a win plus two losses and a plus five differential. Then we have the uh, New York Shell Nets and the Worcestershire Warrens. A win for each of them. Two losses for each of them and plus six differential on each. So yeah, there's really not much separating those two. Then we have our opponents for this week in the Miami Heat Moors with a loss and three uh, with no wins, three losses and a plus seven differential. Uh, a minus seven differential, minus seven differential. Uh, so, yeah, they're not going anywhere. Hopefully, they'll stay where they are. Then we have new teams to the league this week because uh, the Swansea Sharpedos are sadly no more. The JD had to pull out of the league due to personal reasons. So, I'm very sad to lose him. But I'm here. I am very, very happy to welcome Trexus to our league and of course with Trexus in our league that means we have the Indianapolis Carbaleons joining the league taking over the Swansea Sharpedos Turtles and they've already played their week 4 match and they're starting to come back on, uh, they're starting to make a redemption story for themselves really so proving themselves here are the Indianapolis Carbaleons so good luck to Trexus I don't know if you remember me but I believe we were we might have been in the PIC or the PDK together, uh, but uh, the reason I had you blocked on Twitter, and I'm very, very sorry about that. I don't actually remember exactly why I blocked you on Twitter. It's possibly because of that reason that we you were part of one of those leagues that I didn't want to be part of anymore. And when I left the PIC and the PDK, I just wanted to just burn bridges with petrol and get rid of anyone I knew from those leagues. But some of those people like Josh and uh, Darude, they were very nice and they wanted to stick around. They didn't want me to. They didn't want to lose me. So I'm very, very happy about that. And they found their ways to find me again, and I'm liking that. And the, we're here to prove that the Chester Chinchals, we're not the same team you knew back then. We're not the same team that we were in the PDK or the PIC. We're here to win. We're here to do work. We're here to learn. Most importantly, I'm here to learn. You know, I'm not here to win this league, but we'll honestly see if I can make a decent run at it. Well, what's stopping me? And then we have, uh, so the Indianapolis Colts have no wins at this moment in time, but they do have a win, actually. So they have a win and three losses and a, well, if I put their differential together, it should be a minus eight differential. Yeah, it should be a minus eight differential. So there you go. And then we have the Silver Spring Scissors, no wins, three losses, and a plus 13 differential. So there you go. That is the table. So, and there you go. And this is our team. So if you did enjoy this video, you can leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also leave an upvote. You can follow the channel. And you can join us for our match as well. And you can leave comments as well if you're on VidMe. 
and you can join us for our match Sunday night, 8 p.m. I'm very interested in what's going to happen in this match. I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen, but it's going to be a very fun match. So join us. It's going to be Joe's PH Games versus Poise, the Chester Chin Chows, Miami Heat Moors. Join us. It's going to be amazing. But until next time, I'm Joe's PH Games. Mean the Pokemon. Get to Lazar, everybody. Get Pokemon.